this video I will introduce you to the concept of intentional radiators um, when it comes to FCC regulations, more specifically Title uh, 47. And this is something you absolutely have to understand if you are planning to import and manufacture electronics for the, the US market. Well, I will begin by explaining what an intentional radiator is. Product examples, the certif certification authorization procedure as a centerpiece of this, because essentially the reason you need to know why it's an intentional radiator or an unintentional radiator for that matter is to know, okay, do I have to go through the certification authorization procedure or the SDOC authorization procedure? We'll also look into technical requirements, the technical report, device labeling, and also lab testing. All right, let's get to it. So what is an intentional radiator? You find the definition here on the left. Intentional radiators are devices that intentionally generate and emit radio frequency, frequency energy by radiation or induction. And well, in terms that I think more of you will recognize, it includes devices that uh, have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, 5G, GPS, etc. communications. Okay, so let me give you an example. These AirPods, intentional, or at least the module inside. At least, at least the, the Bluetooth module inside. The same thing goes for this mouse, my phone, or at the very least, the module. Okay, so this is this the smartphone. Obviously, it has both a Wi-Fi module and a, uh, a Bluetooth module. What about this microphone? Well, it's wired, right? It's not, it doesn't have any wireless communication, so it shouldn't be intentional. I can't be sure, but if I look at this definition, it shouldn't include this microphone. Okay. Examples, and this comes straight from the FCC website. Uh, wireless garage door openers, wireless microphones, cordless telephones, wireless alarm systems, Wi-Fi transmitters, Bluetooth rated devices. Yeah, devices with wireless communications, which today, let's say, at least now compared to a decade ago, um, even kitchen appliances right like even your refrigerator might have some sort of wireless communication my don't but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm don't tend to be an early adopter of anything but what this means is that more and more products that were perhaps previously considered unintentional radiators because they had no wireless communication like an espresso machine in 2012 right or well 92 for that matter may now in 2022 and beyond have some sort of wireless communications and therefore what i'm getting to you may not necessarily be able to go to this source and and use their product list as a definitive uh, way to classify your product my recommendation is that you look at the technical definition first and foremost okay so as said the centerpiece the, of the well, the procedure or the procedure itself is the certifica certification authorization procedure. This stands in contrast to if you're selling an unintentional radiator, it's an electronic device without wireless communication. That, I mean, it's a very simplified way of describing it. There are exceptions, device classes and all that. But just for the sake of this video, so that we, you don't have to stay with me for another two hours, let's just keep it really simple, right? Now, if this would have been, if you were selling this microphone and it's, it's, it's wired, it's not wireless, and you can go through a, a SDOC procedure, then it's self-certification. It's different. It's different when it comes to wireless devices, intentional radiators. In which case you have to go through the certification authorization procedure. This means you can't self-certify. You need to go with a specific institute. And that's what this is all about. For starters, you need to arrange FCC registration, FCC registration number, FRN. The device must be registered. You, the responsible party must also obtain a grantee code. My understanding is that this is something you get as part of the registration procedure. Then the responsible party, that's most likely you, must file a uh, you must file an application with a TCB, a telecom communication certification body. This is significant. Why so? Because it means you can't just, as is the case with many products, just go to a random testing company and say, "Hey, get this tested," and call it a day. No, you have to specifically go through a TCB. You can find a list of TCBs, telecommunication uh, certification bodies, on the FCC website. By the way. 
what they do is they, they review the supporting information and decide if the product complies with the FCC requirements. They, I'm, I'm sure you can dig it up on the FCC website. Honestly, I don't know the exact details. I can imagine that this documentation includes well, what you would usually include in technical doc, uh, technical file, right? PCB schematics, uh, bill of materials, standards that to which it's supposed to comply and so on, okay? And it, what the TCP does is they're sort of a gatekeeper. If you're familiar with what a notified body is in the EU, it's, you know, it's sort of in the same realm, if I, can put, if I can put it that way. But they issue a FCC equipment authorization. Uh, yeah, they, a grant of certificate is issued by the TCP on the FCC database. That's what I want to get to. Yeah, it can be confusing. So you have to go through them. They will ultimately decide if your product is compliant or not. You can't just go to a random testing company or tell your supplier to arrange it or something. So let's look at the technical requirements. Well, they can be a bit vague. Um, general technical requirements, what's that? I don't know. That's what they write on FCC website. My recommendation is that you ask the TCB or another testing company to determine this for you. And that would depend on the product. Then you have measurement standards and something that's very important uh, when it comes to intentional radiators is the restriction restricted bands of operations so different types of signals operate on different frequencies so they don't then they don't get scrambled together and you know all of a sudden nothing works on this planet because you got bluetooth and wi-fi and lte and gps and all sorts of signals all scrambled right that wouldn't work um and that's that's the purpose of that's that's the core of this to make sure that okay this mouse is working and so is the Wi-Fi and it doesn't yeah destroy this uh, this air conditioning unit up here or whatever right that's that's really what you know that's the very essence of this other requirements too and that depends on the type of uh, radio well the type of device and finally radiated emission limit so you need to go through a testing procedure. Where the, where the TCB in this case is, is verifying, or if you use an external lab, or if they pick one for you, I'm not really sure. That's what a notified body does anyway. Uh, therefore, they thereby, I should say, they can then verify if the product is compliant. So yeah, let's say that they do many things that a testing company would do, but they also look at the documentation. So they go one step beyond that. Which leads me to the technical reports. So, what you will need as part of this procedure is technical report full name and mailing address of the manufacturer of the device and the applicant for certification i'm not sure how they treat the importers again uh, i think a tcb can answer that you can find it on the fcc website the fcc identifier part of the registration a copy of the installation and operating user instructions that's required Description of the circuit functions that would be, I guess, PCB schematic, wiring diagram, combined with comments, I would guess. Block diagram, showing the frequency of all uh, oscillators in the device. I guess that's to, to predict if, if there could be any, any, any uh, well, signal, signal uh, conflicts or, or frequency issues. A report of the measurements showing the compliance with the uh, uh, pertinent FCC technical requirements that could be testing procedures, um, emission limits and so on, interference with other devices and other signals and so on. And that's something that I believe a, well, most likely anyway, you will need to do that either to the TCB or a, another testing company. Finally, you also need uh, to, to document the, the product with, well, with images. I guess you could also include and may actually need to include things like the, the CAD files, the casing files, bill of materials and so on. Okay, then we got the device label, FCC ID. And that's something that you can find on a lot of uh, electronics. I actually checked my computer as a MacBook uh, 2020. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it had a device label. And you also need a compliance statement. And that's something you can see uh, you can find that in the ECFR section 1519 labeling requirements. And I think there may be more than one compliance statement, by the way. But yeah, it's a formal statement stating that the product is, is compliant with the corresponding rules, something like that. But you can find it on FCC website. 
And finally, lab testing. So as I've been mentioning a couple of times now, lab testing is necessary, it's mandatory for the sake of, of verifying uh, compliance with the FCC rules. And if you don't know which ones apply, even within, even if you're certain is your device is an intentional radiator, then I recommend that you, you, you take this to either the TCB or another third party testing company. But in any case, you still have to go through the TCB. Okay, that was just a very brief introduction. I know I apologize if I raise more, if you have more questions after watching this video than you had before coming into it. Then again, I don't wanna keep you on for two hours, this video only serves as a very brief introduction to help you understand the very basics of, okay, how do I understand if my if my device is an intentional or unintentional radiator? And if so, if it's intentional, what do I need to do? What's the, what's the big deal? What's the difference? And that's really the certification authorization procedure. So this video was only meant as an introduction, but I think on with this knowledge, now that you have an overarching understanding, I hope, you can go into the FCC website and um, I think I think the information you find is gonna make a lot more sense. In any case, if you have further questions, you can check our website, compliancegate.com, write a question in the comment section, or you can do the same thing on YouTube. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned a few things.